Hello and welcome to another TLDR US video. You may have heard about the mysterious laptop that was discovered at a computer repair shop in Delaware. As a result, questions have arisen about Joe Biden's honesty regarding his involvement in his son Hunter's overseas business dealings. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what was contained in the laptop, the developments since the original story broke, and what, if any, impact this could have on the election. Speaking of the election, if you think that you know better than the pollsters, then enter the TLDR Route to 270 competition. Submit your predicted election map, and if yours matches the reality, then you'll be entered into a draw to win over $100 of TLDR prizes, including exclusive items. And because we're a British company, we'll also be adding in some British snacks and treats. For your chance of winning, click the link in the description and submit your guess. Terms and conditions apply, entries close on Friday at midnight Eastern. Good luck. So, before we get into the specifics, a little context. On October 14th, the New York Post reported that Hunter Biden's laptop was dropped off at a computer repair shop in Delaware in April of 2019. The Post said that they received the information from the laptop from former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, also President Trump's personal attorney. It's worth noting that the fact it came from Giuliani has been cited by some as a reason to be sceptical. Anyway, according to the store's owner, John Paul MacIsaac, the laptop was left, but services were never paid for, and despite his efforts to get in touch with the customer, the laptop was never picked up. After his failed attempts to get in touch with the customer, the shop owner made a copy of the information and turned that over to a lawyer for Giuliani, and gave the laptop itself to the FBI. According to documents obtained by Fox News, the laptop and external hard drive were seized by the FBI in late 2019 as the result of a grand jury subpoena relating to a money laundering investigation. So, what exactly was on the laptop? Well, emails that showed correspondence between Hunter and his overseas business partners, with one email showing an April 2015 letter of thanks from a top executive at Burisma Holdings, a Ukrainian gas company where Hunter worked with the executive thanking Hunter for introducing him to his father, then Vice President Joe Biden. This doesn't seem like a major issue, except for the fact that Joe Biden stated that he's never spoken to his son regarding his overseas business dealings. These emails, if legitimate, would prove that to be false. I say if legitimate because the repair shop owner couldn't positively identify Hunter Biden as the customer who dropped off the laptop because he's legally blind. However, he claims that the man dropping off the laptop identified himself as Hunter Biden, and there was a sticker on the computer from the Bo Biden Foundation, named for Hunter's brother, Bo, who was the Attorney General of Delaware and died of brain cancer in 2015. So, to be fair, there's no way to know yet whether the computer actually ever belonged to the younger Biden. California representative and chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, claimed that the emails in question were the products of a Russian disinformation campaign, saying that it's been clear for well over a year now that they've been pushing this false narrative about the vice president and his son. To be fair, he's not wrong. Accusations have been flying at the former vice president for over a year now. In fact, during President Trump's impeachment trial, Hunter Biden and his business with Burisma were featured heavily in the president's defense, citing an investigation into corruption as the reason for the now infamous phone call. However, Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe has said that there's no evidence to support Schiff's claims, and that he didn't know where Schiff got the information from, as the intelligence community had not shared any intelligence regarding the laptop with members of Congress. Now, to be fair to Biden, last Wednesday evening, Ratcliffe held a press conference with Chris Way, director of the FBI, in which they detailed attempts by Russia and Iran to interfere with the election by spreading disinformation. This certainly lends itself to the argument that there is a possibility that this whole fiasco is part of foreign efforts to interfere with the election. Now, let me be clear here, we're in no way suggesting that the laptop is the product of foreign disinformation efforts, we're simply acknowledging that it's definitely a possibility. However, one of Hunter Biden's business partners, Tony Bobolinsky, was a recipient of some of the emails in question, and he gave a press conference shortly before the final presidential debate last Thursday, 
in which he corroborated the emails in question and detailed how the former vice president lied about his involvement in Hunter's business dealings. Boblinski was scheduled to meet with senators on the Homeland Security and Finance Committees on Friday, but the meetings had to be postponed. At the press conference, Bobolinsky displayed three cell phones that he says he is the only one to have operated. He maintained that these cell phones contain evidence of Joe Biden's involvement in Hunter's business deals. Bobolinsky also pushed back on Congressman Schiff's claims of Russian disinformation, saying that any claim to the contrary is false and offensive. Now, to be fair, in the emails that have been made public thus far, there's no direct mentions of Joe Biden committing any specific wrongdoing at all. There are, however, references to 20 being given to H, presumably Hunter Biden, and 10 being held by H for the big guy. Boblinski claims that references to the big guy are references to Joe Biden. When pressed on this in Thursday's debate, Joe Biden maintained that he'd never received money from any foreign entity in his life. Biden and his campaign spokespeople have repeatedly denied that Joe himself had anything to do with Hunter Biden's overseas business dealings. So what does this all mean for the election? Well, there's no doubt that the president and his allies will likely point to the laptop as proof of corruption by the Bidens. However, the former vice president still maintains a substantial lead in the polls. Not to mention, we still don't have any hard evidence that the laptop even belonged to Hunter Biden. Even if we assume it did belong to Hunter, it's entirely possible that it would have no impact on the election at all. So ultimately, we'll just have to wait and see what information, if any, comes out next week. That said, Biden may be in trouble if the FBI comes out with any new information, something that would certainly be reminiscent of then-FBI director James Comey's press conference right before the 2016 election. Politico also reported that according to Giuliani's associate Lev Parnas, Giuliani learned about the content of the laptop much earlier than is currently known, as Politico put it. But according to Parnas, Giuliani was first told about the existence of explicit photos and private communication pertaining to Hunter and Joe Biden on May 30th, 2019. The timing of the meeting also suggests Giuliani was made aware of these materials well before Mac Isaac first made contact with either the FBI in December of 2019 or Giuliani's lawyer, who Mac Isaac gave the alleged hard drive to, according to a person familiar with the matter. So, ultimately, who knows? We'll just have to wait and see if any more information comes out. What do you think, though? Should voters pay attention to this story? Is Joe Biden really as corrupt as Trump and his allies allege? Should the FBI disclose more information before the election? Or wait and let voters make their decision first? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we post. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then be sure to back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.